Hello and welcome to this video on virtual choirs. I'm making this video exclusively for members of my choirs wishing to join in with the virtual choir projects that I'm setting up over the next few weeks. If you haven't already, you'll soon receive an email from me inviting you to take part in one of these projects. Unlike our Zoom rehearsals that we've had so far, where we can't all hear each other sing together, in the virtual choir projects we'll be able to reunite the choir in sound and vision. I've mentioned in previous messages examples of virtual choirs that show how they work and I hope you've been able to check those out. For those of you that don't know what a virtual choir is, essentially I'll pick a piece of music that the choir has sung before, hopefully recently, and one that I know that you have the score to. And I will create a virtual choir guide track and a link to a video of me conducting your part. For the whole process you can then pick which one you wish to use, either the audio track or the video, and you can use that to learn your part and eventually create your own recorded submission. In a nutshell, when you have learnt your part, you will either video record or audio record yourself, singing to the guide track and then send the file to me. My exciting job is, involves assembling all the videos and audio I receive and reuniting the choir. I'll then be able to send out the complete performance and hopefully post it online for everyone to see. Before we go too much further, I'm going to explain the equipment that you'll need to take part in this project. I'm guessing most of you will already have these things around your home. The first thing you're going to need is some type of playback device to play the guide track or video on. This could be your computer, laptop or desktop. It could be a phone or a tablet, whichever is easiest. The second thing you're going to need is a set of headphones to plug into your playback device. When you eventually record yourself, you'll need to do so to the guide track or video track by playing it through the headphones so you can listen to it and hear it there. You'll then sing over the top. The purpose of the headphones is to stop the guide track or video appearing on the actual recording you're making. Finally, you'll also need some type of device to record yourself on. The easiest way to do this is to use your smartphone and use the camera app. If you're already using your smartphone as your playback device, you could always borrow someone else's phone and use that as your recording device. If you're using a laptop or computer to play the track or video, your own smartphone is the easiest option to do the recording. If you don't have a smartphone, you could record yourself using your computer mic and or webcam, and hopefully you'll have software built into your computer to do this. On Macs, you can use Photo Booth, which is pre-installed when you get the Mac and I'm sure there must be similar things on Windows PC. The final thing, of course, you'll need is your musical score, so make sure you have that with you. So to summarise, you're going to need a playback device, a set of headphones, a recording device, and of course your score. Each virtual choir project will require three stages of the members taking part. In stage one, you'll need to download your backing track or video and learn your part. In stage two, you'll record yourself. And the final stage, you'll send me the file. Of course, the most important part of this process is your preparation and learning your part. Use any spare moment you have, doesn't matter what you are doing, to listen to your virtual choir track or the video and learn your part. It is worth using headphones when you are rehearsing and listening to your part, as eventually when you record it, you will have to use headphones. Also, make sure that you've got the right part for your voice. In your daily routine, when you're listening to and learning your part from your guide track, it's really important to make sure that you are following all the markings in your score, as when you eventually perform your part, you won't have other singers around you to reference to. Therefore, listen very carefully to the guide voice on your virtual choir track and take note of all the nuances from breathing, end of phrase note lengths, dynamical volume changes, and any vocal effects that have been included in the track. When you've learnt your part, you're ready to move on to stage two, the recording. For the recording, you may have noticed that on the backing track and on the video, there were four clicks at the very start. What I'm gonna need you to do for the recording is set your recording device recording, then set your playback device playing back the video or track that I sent you. And when you hear those four clicks, I would like you to clap on clicks three and four. So one, two, clap, clap with the final two clicks. That will enable me to synchronize your video with the other videos that come in.
You could place your phone on a bookcase, make sure it's a suitable distance away from you, and make sure you're using the camera on the front, not the camera on the back. Alternatively, mount your phone anywhere suitable. Just make sure it's a good distance away so you remain in shot and that the sound doesn't get distorted. It's worth taking a few video tests to check this. Try to avoid being backlit when recording. That means avoid having windows and lights behind you. Generally speaking, just be mindful of the lighting so that you're picked up well by your camera. When your recording device is set up and ready, you can press record, put your headphones in attached to your playback device, press play on your playback device and wait for those four clicks. As Soon as you hear those four clicks, don't forget to clap on clicks three and four and then you can start singing. It doesn't matter if you have your score in shot. When you've finished your recording, you're going to want to check it. So on your recording device, navigate through to the video and play it back. If it's been done correctly, all you should hear is your voice. You should not hear the backing track. It is worth checking it all the way through that you're happy with it. And when you're ready, navigate through to the link that I sent out in the invite. This will take you through to a screen like this. Here, you can upload the file to my Dropbox. You'll first need to choose the file. So navigate through to where the file is stored. When you have selected it, enter your details. You'll need to enter your name and your email address. This will make it clear my end who is sending the file. When you're ready, press send and watch as the percentage increases. When it is complete, it will say 100% done. And that is your job done. It's then over to me to edit the mix, edit the video and post it back to you so you can see the final product. Hopefully it will be a great project, so do watch out for that invite.